The brand new iPad Pro 3rd generation has been announced yesterday and this is the biggest change by far on an iPad ever since the first iPad was introduced back in 2010. So here's not 5, not 10, not 15, not 20, but actually 30,000, this is joking, 30 plus actually, 30 plus things you didn't know and that you need to know about this new iPad before buying one. Also guys, I'm redoing my Instagram, so if you're not already following me at Zone of Tech on Instagram, feel free to do so. I'm posting behind the scenes stuff, and also I'm doing a giveaway on Saturday. This one actually ends on Saturday with mouse, giving away a few premium iPhone XS, Max, and iPhone 10 cases. So yeah, I got some snacks ready, and here's 30 plus things you didn't know and that you need to know about the iPad Pro third generation. So at number one, we no longer have the headphone jack. Yes, the headphone jack has been removed, which is very strange because this is a pro device and you're actually supposed to, you know, make music on this thing, edit video, you can do that, Apple promotes that. And for example, in GarageBand, if you want to do video editing in iMovie or Logic Pro 10 using the Logic Pro 10 remote, you actually get a warning when you're using Bluetooth headphones that there is a delay in terms of the audio. So yeah, wired headphones are so much more preferred for those use cases. But okay, Daniel, you can probably use an adapter. And yes, you can. Apple has just introduced a USB Type-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter. So that's a new adapter. And unfortunately, it doesn't come bundled in the box. You have to buy it separately. Fun fact. Another fun fact is that this new iPad finally comes with fast charging included in the box for the first time. So we get an 80 watt uh, USB-C to USB-C power adapter. So yeah, fast charging included in the box. You don't have to buy it separately in these new iPad Pros uh, 2018. But actually one of the biggest changes to this new iPad is not the new design or the lack of a home button, which I will be covering in a second, but actually the new port. So the lightning port has been removed and now we have a USB Type-C port just like on the MacBooks finally and this is huge not just because you know it's usb type c but also because it supports 4k output up to 60 hertz and you can actually use any usb type c to hdmi adapter or dvi adapter or displayport adapter and you can connect your ipad pro to a 4k monitor apple even showed the lg ultra fine monitors working with the ipad pros at the event which is a bit strange because those monitors only work via thunderbolt so yeah, I'll need to test that out myself, but I don't think these new iPads have Thunderbolt. No way. Do subscribe and notifications if you're new to the channel. Lots of in-depth videos like this one and lots of more things to cover in this video. So yeah, in case you're new to the channel, feel free to enable that bell for more videos like this one. I'll be doing one on the MacBook Air, most likely. But the fifth thing you need to know about this new iPad is that it's designed by Google. <laughs> no, not really, but if you take a look at the corners of the display, they do not match the corners of the actual frame, just like on a Pixel 3 XL and a Pixel 3. Now, this is not an issue with the iPhone 10, where the corners of the display perfectly match the frame of the phone. Next up, this new iPad is quite the thick boy, especially when it comes to the bezels. So the bezels look really thin, but they're actually thicker than before, especially the side ones. The side bezels are thicker than the previous generation 10.5 inch iPad Pro or even the iPad Mini 4's side bezels. And yes, they are significantly thicker than on something like an iPhone 10R, which also comes with an LCD display and face ID and you know a really thin bezel. Now on a tablet it's a bit of a different story because you need some bezels because you know they're such large devices and you don't want to accidentally touch the display when you don't want to. Well the good news is that Apple actually has the best accidental touch rejection and recognition on the market. So you can actually try that with an iPad Pro 10.5 inch or even an iPad mini 4. You can you know put most of your palm on the display and you can actually use it with the other hand which is amazing but for some reason those bezels the side ones are thicker than the previous generation, even though Apple could have made them quite a bit thinner. Another fun fact, did you guys know that this new iPad is actually the thinnest iOS device that Apple has ever made? So previously the iPod Touch 6 generation and also uh, the previous iPad Pro 10.5 inch, those were the thinnest ones at 6.1 millimeters thick, uh, but this one is only 5.9, so even thinner than before. Now here's something really interesting about this new iPad. So because we have an LCD display, really thin bezels and also rounded corners, Apple did something very interesting called pixel masking. So they actually built tiny apertures on the pixels on the very edge of the display to minimize the light bleed from the backlight of the display, pretty much similar to how they've done it on the iPhone XR, but still very impressive that uh, they've actually done that. And then with this new iPad, we also have, well, we no longer have a home button, but we do have the iPhone 10 gesture, so you can swipe up to go home, you can swipe down from the bottom, from the top right corner to bring down the, uh, the control center, pretty much the same gestures as on the iPhone 10. And if you have an older generation iPad, you can also try those gestures in iOS 12. Well, by trying them, I mean that they're you know, the default gestures, you can't really remove those, but there you go. Even if you have a home button iPad, you already have those gestures in iOS 12. And this new iPad supports up to one terabyte of storage, which is insane on a tablet. That's absolutely insane. 
Now, interesting enough, it actually makes more sense to have that storage on, you know, something like an iPad Pro than on something like a 12 inch MacBook, because for example, Netflix actually supports downloading movies offline on the iPad in iOS, but it doesn't support that on the Mac. So if you travel a lot, it makes sense to, you know, get a lot of movies, a lot of games, uh, which you might download on the iPad and not do that on, on the MacBook. So more storage on the iPad makes more sense than more storage on an entry-level MacBook. Even though one terabyte is absolutely insane. Also, if you get a one terabyte model, you also get six gigabytes of RAM uh, instead of four gigabytes, which is what you get with all the other models. Now, leaving the RAM aside, the performance on this thing, on this new iPad is absolutely insane. So we now have the Apple A12X processor from the Apple A10X. So yes, they dropped the Apple 11X naming scheme. This is also a 10 nanometer process, uh, just like the Apple A12 inside the iPhone XS. It has an eight core CPU, a seven core GPU and we get 35% faster single core performance uh, compared to the A10X and 90% faster multi-core performance. Now Apple did say that this is faster than 92% of PC laptops on the market which is true because did you guys know that the Apple A12 inside the iPhone uh, iPhone XS and XS Max and also the iPhone XR is faster single core wise than even the 2017 15 inch maxed out MacBook Pro uh, with an Intel i7 7920HQ processor. Yeah, and I think it was the most powerful laptop processor from Intel in the previous generation and the new iPhones are faster single core wise than that. Which would make the Apple A12X even faster than Apple's own 2018 MacBooks. Fun fact. That was a CPU, but a GPU is also two times faster than last year's iPad Pro 10.5 inch. Now, Apple also said at the event something quite surprising, that the new iPad Pro matches the level of graphical performance of the Xbox One S, not the X, but yes, and that's really, really impressive considering how thin this thing is. And in some cases, it could even be better than the Xbox One S because, you know, we have a 120 hertz panel, so you can actually play games in 20, uh, 2732 by 2048 resolution on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which is higher than Quad HD and also at 120 frames per second compared to 30 frames per second on the Xbox in 1080p. But do we have Red Dead Redemption 2 or GTA 5? or, uh, I don't know, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on the new iPad, we don't. So, you know, we have a lot of performance, but not a lot of stuff to take full advantage of it. However, a new version, actually a full version of Photoshop is coming to the iPad next year, redesigned for touch and support for gestures on the new Apple Pencil. And yes, there is a brand new Apple Pencil, the Apple Pencil 2. However, did you guys know that the new iPads uh, 2018 only work with the Apple Pencil 2, they don't work with the first one. And then all the iPads, they do not work with the Apple Pencil 2, they only work with the old Apple Pencil. So old Apple Pencil is for the old iPads, new one is for the 2018 iPads and after. But this new pencil is actually pretty cool. So it has a new design, it looks like a pencil now, it has a squared off side, and it's also matte now instead of glossy, so you do get a bit more grip compared to the first generation, and it magnetically attaches to the iPad. This could be actually one of the reasons why Apple went with a squared uh, frame design for this new iPad and also the same design for the Apple Pencil, but that's amazing. It works pretty much in the exact same way as it does on a Surface Pro, and I've done a separate video on that, absolutely love that thing. And then this new pencil also supports gestures, so it has a touch uh, area, and you can actually swipe, and then you can select from multiple modes and apps uh, such as, you know, multiple brushes, eraser, and so on in Photoshop, so that's pretty cool. And then you can also engrave the Apple Pencil now, just like you can with the iPad, so you can add, I don't know, a custom, I don't know, a custom name or something, a phrase, so that's also really, really interesting to see. Now, something that I was not expecting to be happening, I've seen the leaks, but I didn't really believe those, the Smart Collector has indeed been relocated uh, onto the bottom portion of the back, so opposite side to the old home button's location, and we also have a second magnetic connector for the Apple Pencil on the side. So what's that connector used for, uh, the smart connector? Well, at the moment only for the new smart folio keyboard, yes, that's in the name now. So that's a new keyboard, it's a new smart keyboard for the iPad Pro, and it also protects the back. Now what's really cool about this is that it's fully magnetic, and even the iPad, we have uh, 17 magnets inside the iPad Pro, and then the back of that attaches automatically to the iPad, so that's pretty cool. And the keys themselves do feel, do seem to be at least from, uh, from the images, a bit more tactile, I'll be covering that on the channel as soon as, soon as I have it. And then the connector is indeed on the on the back, on the side now, which means that the back section of the keyboard is actually the one that attaches to the connector rather than, you know, uh, the actual bottom of the keyboard. So as long as you have the keyboard attached to the back of the iPad, it would work. And we also have a brand new smart cover. It's called the Smart Folio Cover, which replaces the smart cover uh, that we had before. And it works in the exact same way as the keyboard. So it protects the back and the front, 
but it's really expensive. So it starts from $80 in the US, and guess how much in the UK? 85 pounds in the UK, or $110 if you do the conversion. And what's really cool about this new iPad is that we have smart HDR from the iPhone XS and the iPhone XR. We have it on this new iPad, which is really impressive. The camera on the iPhone XS is just amazing, mostly because of that improved HDR processing, uh, which is possible thanks to the new Apple A12 processor, and we do have this on the new iPad Pros. However, in terms of the camera itself, it's actually a downgrade in some ways from the iPad Pro 10.5 inch, and you'll see what I mean. So first off, we no longer have optical image stabilization on this new iPad, which is strange. We don't have it. We had it in the previous iPad. We no longer have it. Fun fact. And also fun fact number two, uh, we, we went from a six element lens on the previous 10.5 inch iPad to a five element lens on this one. So yeah, the camera itself, the module, is actually a downgrade, but we do get a 4K60 video, so that's good. Uh, we also get portrait mode, so we get pretty much the same with the front-facing camera, thanks to Face ID. So we get a front portrait mode, portrait lighting at Animoji and Memoji, just like on the iPhone X. Uh, obviously, the back camera is just a single module, so we don't get that uh, with the back camera. And then Face ID works in both portrait as well as landscape mode on this new iPad, because you know it's an iPad, so you'll end up using it in landscape way more often. And it also supports one gigabit class LTE if you go and pick up the LTE model, just like the iPhone XS. Also, Bluetooth 5.0, just like the iPhone XS. Unfortunately, we no longer have support for CDMA networks, by the way. Now, it does support up to 29 bands of LTE from 25. So yeah, if you're the kind of person who travels a lot, uh, this new iPad would be supported in even more countries with those four more LTE bands. Now, interesting enough, this new iPad only comes in silver and space gray. So we no longer have the gold and the rose gold color options that we had before. And then the price, by the way, guys, the price is absolutely insane on this thing. So here's the thing, it starts from $799, or interesting enough, 769 pounds in the UK. Finally, a not a one-to-one -one conversion ratio. That's for the baseline 64 gigabytes model, which I really don't think is enough, but anyway. Um, so this model compared to the $650 that the previous 10.5 inch used to cost. So this model is $150 more expensive than last year's. And that's without a pencil and a keyboard. So if you buy a pencil at 120 pounds, if you buy the smart folio keyboard at 180, so we already at 1,070 pounds, which is really close to the 1,200 pound entry price for this new MacBook Air. Like I said, that's for the baseline option with 64 gigabytes of storage. So if you max this thing out, it's it's actually gonna cost you 2,169 pounds, guys, and that's without Apple Care. So a 15-inch MacBook Pro with a dedicated GPU starts from 2,350 pounds, just to give you guys an idea. And yeah, I know, the MacBook, uh, the, uh, the iPad could be more powerful CPU-wise than the MacBook Pro, however, you can do so much more on a MacBook Pro because, you know, it's a full-fledged operating system. However, if you feel like this new iPad is too expensive, you can buy the previous one because it's still available for whatever reason and it's only 30 pounds cheaper. So there you go, 30 plus things you need to know about the iPad Pro third generation. But what if you want to learn even more about even more topics? Let's just say that you want to learn programming, but you don't really want to apply to a three to four year university degree in computer science like I did, but instead you want to learn programming and app development from the comfort of your home while paying as little as possible. Well, in that case, definitely check out brilliant.org. So brilliant.org offers online courses and lectures on maths, computer science, physics, and more. For example, if you go through a computer science section, you can start by doing the fundamentals of computer science, where you're introduced to algorithms, recursion, binary trees, and then once you've done those courses, you can actually take quizzes to test your knowledge. And even while you're reading a specific chapter, you do get these interactive panels and questions on the side to help you better understand the topic. And probably the best part about Brilliant is that those courses are not written by random individuals, but rather actual teachers and researchers. So yeah, if you're a student or just someone who's really passionate about learning more, I do recommend checking out brilliant.org. So simply go to brilliant.org slash zoneoftech or use the coupon code zoneoftech at checkout and the first 200 people to do so get a 20% discount off uh, the annual subscription. So yeah, really great idea for those of you who want to learn and discover more. And thanks to Brilliant for being the sponsor of this video. And once again, uh, check out the link in the description for a 20% discount. But yeah, do subscribe and notifications if you're new to the channel and you want to see more videos like this one. I'll be doing one on the MacBook Air and maybe just maybe on the Mac Mini if you're interested in that. Also, guys, be sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes shots at Zone of Tech. So, yeah, go to Instagram.com slash Zone of Tech, follow me there. And I'm also doing that giveaway that I mentioned on Saturday with mouse. I'm giving away those premium iPhone XS Max and iPhone 10 cases. And finally, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this new iPad Pro third generation, the, the big iPad X, so to say. 
Do you think it's worth it? Do you think it's not? Do you think it's crazy expensive? And would you actually use one for actual work or not? Keep in mind that we still don't have a mouse, so using it for long periods of time can be a bit discomforting. So yeah, let me know in the what you guys think. Uh, join the zone if you're new to the channel and you want to support the channel. You get access to some pretty cool exclusive features and you also support the channel and, uh, you know, pretty cool exclusive features. So that's cool. And yeah, this has been pretty much it. Feel free to give this video a like if you've enjoyed it to let me know. I'm Daniel, and um, yeah, let me know also if you made it until the end by saying I made it until the end in the comments, hashtag, uh, and or something. Yeah, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Is that a fact? Signing out. Cheers.